Hi, I'm having a fantastic conversation here with Anna, who is the president of the Moscow Free Speaking Club, the oldest Toastmasters club in Russia. And this is Natalia Toker, founder of Upskill Me, public speaking training for non-native speakers. Thank you, Anna. Yeah, yeah. And we, were we would like to remind you once again that on November 15th, Toastmasters is having the next event in the building of Moscow Exchange. And I'm honored to give a master class on spontaneous conversations in business and in life. Everyone is invited. It's free, Anna, right? Yes, yes, it is for free. Why did you decide to make a, another event uh, at the Moscow Exchange? So I know that Toastmasters is pretty much for everyone. Everybody can come and practice public speaking. Why did you decide to tackle business audiences this time? Yeah, actually, uh, Toastmasters is for everyone, but this time we decided to have something special and we had a great opportunity to reach people at Moscow Exchange who are using English for their daily work, doing presentations in English. And this time we will have a special meeting where we all together will be practicing our spontaneous conversation skills together, Toastmasters and Moscow Exchange. <laughs> so so you're, you're expecting to have about a hundred participants right yes mm -hmm. yes at the moment we have around uh, 70 people who have registered mm -hmm. and we still have some places so hurry up to register yeah there's still room so guys you feel free to register and uh, come on November 15th at 7 o'clock yeah doors open at uh, 6 30 mm -hmm. so if you come in advance it would be better and we actually, we've had breakfast today and we've had fantastic conversations on communication skills, on public speaking practice in business and in life. And one of the things I would like to share with you is the approach to training public speaking skills. You know, I, I asked Anna how she does it and how they do it at Toastmasters. Because imagine every second week people come and present something, right? Yeah. Uh, do, do you give them a topic? Or uh, no, our speakers choose the topic themselves. Mm -hmm. Their only requirement to their speech is to be... No, we have two requirements to mm -hmm. the speech. Mm -hmm. It should be interesting for the audience and speakers should demonstrate skills uh, according to educational guidelines. So there are like guidelines from the Toastmasters headquarters yeah. and they have to follow the guidelines, right? Yeah, we have educational program which is called Pathways. It is uh, elaborated by uh, headquarters in the United States. Mm -hmm. And uh, this program allows to grow public speaking skills step by step. But what is most interesting to me is that not just people have to show up and make an interesting presentation, but people have to show if people have to show up prepared, they need to prepare their presentation in advance all by themselves and demonstrate the number of skills that's set in the guidelines. And my first question was, what, do you help them prepare? Do you, how do they learn to demonstrate all those skills? Do you, do you have some courses for them, some educational programs or anything? And Anna said, no, they just come, speak, and if they did it right, we're going to tell them. If they did it badly, we're also going to tell them. <laughs> It is a uh, practice-based education. Uh, mm -hmm. There is minimum of theoretical material uh, before the presentation and everything happens in the room. Person comes to the stage and uh, delivers the presentation in front of the audience in a very friendly atmosphere and uh, receives the feedback immediately. So you learn as you go. And I love that approach because I exercised it myself. You cannot learn everything in advance and then you, you say most people actually um, handle public speaking this way. I'm going to learn everything about it and then I'm going to talk. But in reality what happens is when people learn all the rules and they learn everything they need to do, they're afraid to talk because they're afraid to break one of the rules. And, and the same happens with the language. You learn the rules in advance, all the grammar rules, constructions, words, and then people don't speak. And I, I thought this is so sad. And I absolutely love this approach where you just have to show up and do things and based on feedback, you improve if you choose to improve, if you really choose to get better at what you do. Do you help them in any other way rather than giving feedback? And how often do they receive negative feedback? Maybe have you had situations where people were not ready to accept feedback? Uh, accepting feedback is always tough. Mm -hmm. But in Toastmasters uh, it is very friendly atmosphere and uh, feedback is always including both parts. 
personal evaluator highlights what was already successful in this speech, but also highlights what should be improved in next uh, speeches. So it is a combination of positive and negative things which mm -hmm. help to go and grow further in friendly atmosphere. Yeah, the, this atmosphere of friendly environment where you are allowed to make mistakes, as many mistakes as necessary, as many mistakes as it takes until you actually learn that thing. That's really, really important. And this is actually the place where you can afford to make a mistake. You do it not just in one, many, many, yeah. many mistakes. Yeah, you yeah. cannot do it on your business presentation in front of your investors. But in Toastmasters, we will forgive you. But in t after, you will be prepared to shine in front of your business partners. Yeah, I, I hear it all the time because I work with people who do presentations for business. They make business meeting reviews, they present in front of shareholders, they, they I don't know, do some crazy reports with a lot of numbers or they need to present an idea or startups for pitch to investors. And they all, all people in business share this mindset where they tell me, Natalia, I can't afford to be less than outstanding. I need to be outstanding when I make that presentation. I need to shine, as you said. And everybody wants to shine from the first try. I can do it once and, and you're not going to shine if you just if you have done it once. It, it takes time. It takes more than one attempt. And this is a perfect environment where you can learn, improve, get feedback, improve again, improve again, get more feedback. And it doesn't really take a lot of educational courses or programs or knowledge. It takes a lot of practice. And these, as you said, this um, ability to accept feedback, which is not easy. Trust me, it's not really easy for a lot of people. And, and your feedback is based on the set of skills that they're supposed to develop, right? Yeah, yeah. Can you highlight what skills are we talking about here? Uh, we're talking about various aspects of public speaking. Mm -hmm. uh, the very first one is to just start. Speaking yes, in front of the good. audience, it is called icebreaker. So people break the ice and after this speech they continue their educational path and every uh, new speech should develop some new skill. Mm -hmm. They continue with structure, then how to say it, meaning choosing appropriate words to express your idea. So it's like breaking the ice, like starting to speak. Starting to speak. Structure. To yourself, language. Uh, structure. Language. What other skills? Uh, body language. Yeah, important. Uh, vocal variety. Okay. What is, what is vocal variety? Can you explain? Uh, vocal variety mm -hmm. is playing with your voice, with uh, its speech tone, mm -hmm. uh, speed of your conversation. So you can vary volume. higher, lower. You can, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, higher, lower, faster, slower, make awesome. pause mm -hmm. to attract uh, attention. And yeah, it's uh, my favorite. I always say, if you want to attract attention, say nothing. For a few seconds. Yeah. Yeah, it People start attention. listening. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, okay, pause is what, what other skills are we talking about? Uh, researching your topic. Okay, doing some research. Uh, uh -huh. Using visual aids. Mm -hmm. Like slides uh, or slides. not it, only? It could be everything. Okay, just For using example, props. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> props, yeah. Okay, what else? Uh, then uh, persuade your audience. Persuasion skills, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, inspire yes. the audience. I think the last two are really important because especially in business, you need to be able to inspire your team because people who come to me, let's say most of the time, they need to inspire their team to do something or and or they need to convince the shareholders that they really need this money, they really need this extra budget or that they're doing the right thing. So persuasion skills and um, the ability to inspire, to motivate others, to um, ignite someone's imagination. Yeah. It's very cool. And they don't actually learn it from books or from you or from anyone else. They learn it by doing, right? They learn it by doing. They read just uh, two, three pages of a uh, guideline of how the speech should be organized. Mm -hmm. And then they learn from the audience. They come to the stage and deliver their speech and look into the eyes of the audience and uh, see in these eyes, as in the mirror, what was successful in the speech and uh, yeah. what should be improved. Was the audience inspired or persuaded? That's always been fascinating to me. I mean, I could never understand that, I could never grasp that concept when a public speaking training lasts for a day or two days, where people kind of get a lot of instructions on one day on how to be a perfect communicator. 
and they even call it how to be a top communicator. You cannot learn it in one day and then people come back to their routine, to what they're used to doing every day and nothing really changes because just human brain is not able to absorb all that information and even if it can, it's just information. It does not become a skill until you practice it. So. You, yeah, and adopting yeah. this information step by step by small portions of one speech at a time. And if it is continuous educational process, it really helps to learn. I would a little disagree with you here. I don't really think it's the educational process that's going on. It's life. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, you come to Toastmasters and you present every other week. Every second week you make a speech in front of other people. Yeah, you're learning, definitely, you're practicing, but then there's so many other situations in life. Maybe you're invited to a wedding and you have to give a toast, right? Or maybe you give a business review at, at work, or maybe you need to do a, to make an internal presentation in front of your colleagues. These are all life situations, real-world examples, practical situations. It's life. It's not educational something anymore, because I think the problem is many people can... Dis differentiate this very very clearly this is education and this is life well to me it's all the same thing yeah I, I agree sometimes people feel comfortable on the lesson and uh, can very fluently tell that london is the capital of great britain <laughs> but when it comes to practice they just can say hello my name is anna and that's it yeah. And uh, here uh, it is the way to break ice, break these barriers and start talking and continue talking and continue talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it, it's, it's all about the skills. It's not really about the education. It's not really about the academic degree. It's all about gaining skills that help you go through life with more confidence. And public speaking is becoming one of the most important skills today, especially in business. Communication is no longer a soft skill, it's a fundamental skill for any business. So, if you want to practice and learn how to do spontaneous conversations, you're invited to join us on November 15th. It's a free meeting, 7 p.m. at the Building of Moscow Exchange. And Anna has another exciting event in December, right? What is it? Yeah. Show uh, it. This is, it will be a Moscow here. Area Winter Conference. Mm -hmm. uh, it will take place on 8th and uh, 9th December. Uh, this is 15th International Conference in Moscow. Uh, we will have master classes delivered by brightest Toastmasters representatives who are coming from different countries. So you will hear people who learn public speaking all by themselves, just through practice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, uh, it uh, will be held in English. Uh, we will have contests where the brightest representatives of Moscow clubs will compete in their speaking skills together with uh, our guests from abroad. Is it, is it free or is it, is, do you have to buy a ticket somewhere? Uh, yeah, yeah. For, for, uh, for this event uh, you should buy a ticket. Uh, there is a website, mm -hmm. uh, uh, we will put a link, uh, it is uh, www.winterconference2018. Uh, Winterconference2018.com, it's very simple. Cool. So you can get to know all the other speakers who learn to do public speaking all by themselves through practice and feedback. Uh, awesome. Thank you so much, Anna, for this amazing conversation. Thank you, Natalia. Okay. <laughs>